morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Flow Church with Bishop Dag Fjord Mills. I'm Seamus, your Flow Pastor, and it's an absolute blessing to have you join us on this Sunday. It's an absolute blessing to have you with us. Wherever you are in the world, make sure you're fully connecting right now. Start by liking, start by commenting, be active wherever you are, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, X, wherever you're watching from, make sure that you let us know that you're here that you're tuning in with us and it's a real blessing to have you. You can join us on Zoom as well. Don't forget, Zoom is also an option. So hop on Zoom right now, invite a friend, don't come alone, so they can also be a part of this special, special time. Last time, last Sunday, we looked at the tests of, they went through the tests of the righteous and of course as well, Mara, the, the, the test of Mara. So, and we, we learned about the victory over Mara. So as you're joining, trust that today you will learn something very special something new will come into your life from today so that's a very very good reason why you should share that link share the link now let it flow get it out to anyone and everyone so they won't miss out on the blessings of today's story many of us have tests daily daily tests we can call on the lord in those times but there are people right now the lord they don't have uh, an option to go don't think about it. They don't have this understanding that there's another solution in their life for their difficulties. But you can help by letting it flow, sharing that link out now so they can join and experience the presence of God. It only takes one click to change a life, one click to change someone's life. So share the link, get it out to those people right now so they will join. And by the grace of God, at least one person, one person can join and have their life transform just from you alone sharing that link so do it right now don't hesitate don't keep it for yourself but share the link so people can join the flow church and be truly truly blessed beautiful beautiful i hope you've liked i hope you've given us a comment and i hope you've shared that link now that you've done those three things i want you to prepare yourself get focused get present and get ready to spend some time with the lord as we go in now to our time of prayer hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah amen thank you pastor shimos thank you it's a wonderful sunday morning and we are excited here at the flow church we want to begin to pray this morning some hundred verse four says enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name amen Amen. so we want to rise to our feet and give thanks to the lord give thanks to the lord i want you to give thanks to the lord with this understanding that this is the first thing we do in order to enter into his presence say thank you thank you you for yesterday thank you for this week thank you for last week thank you for the past hours thank you for the past 24 hours Lord I thank you with a grateful heart I thank you in the name of Jesus and so lift your voice with me let's thank the Lord together let's bless his name together Father we thank you we thank you we thank you thank you for your grace thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you Lord. thank you for your goodness towards us you are a good god yes a good god you are a good god and we thank you we thank you we thank you thank you lord Thank the Lord. Bless the Lord. Give him thanks and praise. Thank the Lord this morning. Thank the Lord this morning. Thank the Lord this morning. La copa la zadaba. Zula mama de lebe. Lizura bala mama de lebe. 
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank Him for this morning. Maybe it is afternoon where you are. Maybe it's already midnight where you are. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank the Lord for His grace, for His mercy. Yes. Your mercy. Your mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Les sonta krabalan de mende, kote pele manda la mama dala ba, mora sala mama manda la mama dala ba, e na mora tili mama dala ba, sando ba de mende de mende de mende. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless we are thanking the Lord and we are saying Father this morning we enter your presence with thanksgiving thanksgiving yes Lord we thank you we praise you we adore you Kode laba, shumale mama dalaba, zama lebere mene, mota bala mada ba, zone mene le mama dalaba, oh kata tala ba ba la ba ba, shemuda le zada ba la ba, mabi ya le kote, meko ba na mazone le mene le mene, yes Lord, eshana mama le mama ma. Oh, <laughs> Two weeks ago, we learned something fantastic mm. from God's word that we thank God for his 
goodness. Okay. And then we praise him for his greatness. My God. And we worship him mm. for his holiness. Mm. And this morning, we are going to continue. But we will be doing these three simultaneously. Wow, okay. Now, when you look at Psalm 100 verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Mm. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, the next verse gives us the reason for the Lord is good. Whoa. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Yes, yes, so Lord. the reason for thanksgiving is that for the Lord is good. How many of us will testify that the Lord has been and continues to be good to us? Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, in Psalm 145, we now see why we praise him. Psalm 145, it's from verse 1. He says, I will extol thee my God and King, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Verse 2, every day I will bless thee and I will praise thy name Whoa. forever and ever. Why? Verse 3, great is the Lord. Jacques so we praise him for his greatness. Yes. Mm. And greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we worship him for his holiness. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, mm. and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night. And what do they say? Holy, holy, holy. holy. Yes. Lord God Almighty, Amen. which was and is and is to come. The next verse, verse, verse 9. Verse 9. And when these beasts give glory and honor mm. and thanks to him mm. that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. What happened? The next verse. The next verse. The four and the twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. And what do they do? They worship. They worship mm. him that liveth forever and cast their crowns before the throne. We want to continue to pray. Three different things that we are doing. Lord, I thank you thank for your goodness. You are yes. good. Lord, I praise you yes. for your greatness is unsearchable. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Worship you, you are holy. You are holy. Holy. Oh. holy. Holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy, Lord. He holy. who was who is and who is to come. You want to lift your voice this morning. Praise him, thank him, worship him. Oh yes, Lord, we lift your name, we extol. Oh, la sampa la dini malamaba. Le baranda la mama de nimebe. Zola malaba bala de la mama. Mando lo samba de lebebe de nimebe la mama. Le para su rapa vale de me de me me la santa la baba de la baba de cheque me la samba randa la mama de ne me de ne me de me la mama 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 yo de manda me mama de le me de ne me me oh god oh god la sama de makato bala baba ramanda le baba oh la sama mama Le <laughs> Oh, 
Bless the Lord. Bless him in the spirit. Makata da balaba. Mandoloza. Simene ne me na mana na mama. Ulanga balaba balaba. Lisa munde ne me ne na me me ne ne mama. Oh, rapa la samane ne me me ne ne me me. We bless your name, O God. We bless your name, O God. Oh, la shoka la manda la baba. Le sabaranda la mama. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Makota na balama. La sambra de ni manda ni manda ni manda ni manda. Bless the Lord this morning. Bless him. 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 Bless Thanksgiving and worship and praise and worship and praise. Thanksgiving and worship and praise. Let's pray now for the Holy Spirit this morning. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit this morning. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit this morning. The Holy Spirit. Oh, we pray for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray. We pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit this morning. We pray for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues. Pray for the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Simply says, Be in this place today. That's our prayer. That's our cry. Lord, Holy we don't Spirit, Holy leave this Spirit. place for We pray. We pray. Sing it 
Pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, pray and ask for the Holy Spirit this morning. Ask for the Holy Spirit this morning. Ask for the Holy Spirit this morning. Pray for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Ask God for the Holy Spirit. Pray and ask God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Yes. Like a rushing mighty wind. Like the rushing of a mighty wind. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, oh, how we need you, how we want you, how we desire you. Yes, Yes. For the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We pray for the Holy Spirit. We pray for the Holy Spirit. We pray for the Holy Pray for the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. Let your spirit overflow.
Pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, like a rushing mighty wind. Oh, la samba, la Pray for the Holy Spirit this morning. If we be, if we know how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more those that ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit this morning. Pray for the Holy Spirit this morning. Pray and ask for the Holy Spirit. He will guide us into all truth. He will guide us into all truth. Pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. How be it when the Spirit of truth is come? He will guide you. He will guide you. Pray. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, your guidance, your guidance. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, pray for the Holy Spirit, pray for the Holy Spirit, pray for the Holy Spirit. After having seen all these songs, when Jesus appeared to them, the Bible says he breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He is the one we need. After all is said, after all has been experienced, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Receive 
ye the Holy Ghost. My God.
26. Okay. The word of God says that. How is it then? Brethren, when ye come together, every one of you had a sound, had a doctrine, had a tongue, had a revelation, had an interpretation. Now, this is the menu for every gathering. When you come, you will receive somebody receive a sound. And then you also receive a doctrine. A doctrine, a set of beliefs of something from the word of God that will change your life. Yes. It's a, you, and someone also received a tongue. That means a gift, a spiritual gift. Mm. This morning, oh, as Jesus. our pastor comes to minister to us, you may be sitting there hearing, but in the realm of the spirit, you may receive an additional gift to the gift you already have. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, and have a revelation. This morning, God will bless you with a revelation. Amen. And had an interpretation. Yes, a scripture you have read for a long time that you don't understand. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, light will come on. Oh, yeah. You will receive an interpretation. Yes. So these are the good things that God wants to give us today. But you want to pray. The question is, will I be able to receive all these? So you want to pray the Holy Spirit this morning. Let my ears be opened. Let my eyes be opened. 
to see the things I must see, to hear the things I must hear in the name of Jesus. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you this morning in the name of Jesus. Pray for the Holy Spirit this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray this morning that my eyes, my ears, oh, pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray. As we pray, pray, pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to see, open your ears to hear, and you will receive an interpretation. You will receive a revelation. Pray that you will receive a gift, a gift. A gift. Pray this morning that you will receive a doctrine, a teaching. My God, La Seba La Mamada. Holy Spirit, Holy 
Yes. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. May I see what I must see yes. and hear what I must hear. Pray that as you behold the glory this morning, as we behold the glory this morning, ah, we will be changed. Yes, we will be changed. Yes, we will be changed. Pray this morning as we behold the glory of the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus. We will be changed into the same image from glory to glory. Pray in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray, open my eyes, open my eyes to behold the glory, the glory, the glory. When our man of God comes to stand here, Lord, open my eyes to see glory. As I behold the glory, I will be changed. I will be changed. Pray in the name of Jesus. With open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord. We will be changed this morning. Pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Pray this morning. God wants to transform us. He wants to transform us. He wants to change us. Pray in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, But we all, with open face, behold it as in a glass, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. That our eyes will see the glory this morning. I will be changed. Oh, 
opportunity yes, Jesus. to ask for the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. We receive, yes. receive the Holy Spirit, yes, Holy Spirit. Yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. I want you to take out an offering this morning. An offering. Yes. Our worship. Hallelujah. I want us to worship God with our money. Amen. Amen. I want us to worship God with our money and ask the Lord and worship him with what we have. Hallelujah. In those days, no one worshipped without a sacrifice. Yes. They would bring a lamb, mm. a sheep, a goat, even the, all the traditional religions have this element mm. of something that is brought as a sacrifice as part of the worship mm. part of the service to God you bring you bring something you don't just come empty handed you bring something of your life mm. amen. amen that is why when you bring something funny it's funny mm. yeah. you get what I'm saying yeah, yeah. amen amen, amen. So let us present on this Sunday something nice. Hallelujah. And say, Lord. So it's not like two CDs, one CD, five CDs, ten CDs, one dollar, ten dollars. It's like that's not the point. Okay. The point is that you've presented a sacrifice to Hallelujah. God Amen. as part of your worship mm. today. And that is a great blessing. It's a great blessing. Oh, my Shandola Makabaranda. Wherever you are, wherever you are, worship God with what you put down before him and thank him. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. And I know God is going to bless you Hallelujah. on this amazing Sunday morning flow service. Hallelujah. 
Now, I want you to subscribe on this Sunday mo morning. I don't know what time you are watching. Maybe you are watching on Plo Flow Pacific or Flow East. Yes. Or you are watching on uh, Flow America. Flow Asia. Flow Asia. Whichever of the flows you are watching on, that is a blessing. And I want you to give your special offering. When you finish giving this offering, I'm going to take another offering, but I'll show you why, why when. Now, remember that flow is a flexible, it means flexible. Okay. So there's this type of very rigid, you do this, followed by this, followed by this, followed by this. It's not like that. It doesn't work here. First love means young. Okay. The flow means flexible. So it's a sort of wonderful uh, blessing because you cannot be young, you cannot be flexible without being young. Yes. Hmm. Mm. Father, thank you for everybody everywhere yes, Lord. who is sowing a seed like who is worshipping you this morning with, with money. We are grateful. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Psalm 119. I don't know. Um, this, let's start from verse 96. Psalm 119, remember, all right, in case you don't know, it's the longest psalm, and then it's always about the word of God. The psalm is about the word. So the, the whole psalm is about the word. So it's an unusual psalm. But it's a very beautiful psalm. It says, I have seen an end of all perfection. But thy commandment is exceeding broad. Change the version. Now, verse 96. All right. Your, your commandment is exceedingly broad. Now, you see, one day somebody said to me, I've never seen a Christian author writing on as many subjects as you have written. He said, it seems you have written on many things. You see, in other words, it's broad, like those who write on this, write on that, write on this, but, you know. So there you see what he says, that your commandment is exceedingly broad. God's, God's commandment and God's word is wide-ranging. He is touching on a lot of areas in your life. So those of you who have things, you say, oh, this is personal. Uh -uh. This is private. Mm. Then you don't know God. God's word is broad. So when he says, I've seen an end or a limit to all perfection, he's trying to say that when I look around, I see a lot of things that are not perfect. There's an end to perfection. But as for your word, it's like it's, it's, it's broad. It touches every area. All right? Oh, how I love thy law. 
It is my meditation all the day. Amen. Amen. You, you must love the law. Amen. Amen. And it must be your meditation all the day. I believe that those who soak in the word are more anointed even than those who pray. The word will make you pray. Don't forget. The word will make you pray. But the word is God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So the word is God. So the more you soak in the word, the more you are soaking in God. You are soaking in the Holy Ghost. You are soaking in the anointing. You are soaking in the presence. And that is why you notice when you listen to something again and again, you also develop a love. You see, when you become happy at messages, you've reached a certain stage of ministry when you become happy at messages like privately you become excited privately not listen god hates deception and all shows show of oh oh yeah you lift up your hand in church not i mean almost not really to show but it's like you are showing off if you lift up your hand at home alone, it's even better. Remember, God hates deception. One day God said to me, I hate, I hate deception. I hate lies. Because it reminds me of the devil. Yes. Because when I woke up, I heard it like a voice. I hate lies. I hate deception. It reminds me of the devil. So, develop a love, like allow the love of the law to flow. Like if you love the word, the word it's good. You've got into a good place. When I say love the, law, love the word, I don't mean love the preacher who, like the word is just nice to you. You know, I'm about to take an offering. Yes. But I want to tell you something before I take the offering. And when I tell you, my prayer is that you will appreciate the word. Yes. Through, thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me, those who want to get rid of enemies. Huh? Those who want to get rid of enemies. I want this enemy to go away. They are always around. And the greater you are, the more you have enemies. Yes. Jesus had a lot of enemies. Enemies to the point of putting him to death. People think the gooder I am. Excuse, I know, don't, don't try. Listen, it's not about English. I'm trying to make you understand something. The gooder you are, the fewer enemies you will have and the fewer people will dislike you. Then, then, then that law was completely set aside for Jesus because he's the goodest. The whole town voted that he should die at Easter time. The whole town came and voted 
And the only people who supported him supported him secretly. So through that, through thy commandments, somebody here is wondering, Lord, how can I overcome my enemy? Through the word. Thy commandment has made me wiser than my enemy. It means that there is a word in the Bible or a word from God that makes you wiser than an enemy who you are fighting against. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. You see, somebody can teach you the word or even teach you um, in school. But according to this amazing scripture, you will surge forward and catch up with your teachers uh, by, by, by meditating on this word. I have more understanding. So that's how to surge forward and to catch up. I've surged forward in the ministry, and I've caught up with a lot of the people that were teaching me by meditating on what they were teaching me. You see, there's hardly anything that I teach that is not as a result of meditation on what my teacher taught me. I don't know whether I'm in the right class. Should I move to a physics class? Because I wasn't bad at physics, you know. I'm saying that there is almost nothing huh, that I teach that is not a teaching based on a meditation of what my teacher taught me. Yes. If I study, if I preach, uh, name it, claim it, and take it, it's from a meditation of what I learned from Kenneth Hagin. Or if I preach on faith, it's from a meditation of what I learned from one of my teachers. I'm surrounded by teachers, but you see, you can be taught, but you never catch up. I see you catching up. Amen. I see you catching up in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beautiful. I have more understanding. It sounds like a proud kind of comment, you know, I have more understanding than all my teachers. But the truth is that when your teacher teaches you something, there is somebody who can have it more understanding. Let's take even a song. Somebody can sing a song, but another person come and sing the song even nicer. Many people sing Andre Crouch's songs nicer than he sang them. If you hear some people singing, how can I say thanks for all the things that you've done? For me? And what is the, the last word? What's the chorus? To God be the glory. I mean, you need a very high voice. And there are some ladies that have sung that very beautifully, not like him. He came and taught us the song. You get it? He came and taught us the song. But there are some people who've meditated on the song. And they seem to understand the song better than the one who wrote the song. Yes. That's why we don't mind singing people's songs. Yeah. Because it becomes our song. Yeah. Hmm. Then another funny verse which also sounds a little proud. It says, I have more understanding than, I understand more than the ancients. 
<laughs> Understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Again, you are, hello. Again, you are seeing the catching up. Surge, surging for type. I am catching up and I am surging forward. You know how to spell surge. S U R G. I N G. Surging. I am catching up and I'm searching for it. So you are catching up with teachers and ancients. I understand more than the ancients. <laughs> because, because I keep thy precepts. So, like you are like an old man in a young body. Yeah. Because of the word. Why? Because the word was there before you came. Long ago. The word is telling us Adam's children, about Adam and his son's problem between themselves. If you read some of the ancient book, it tells you Adam had nine sons. Adam had nine sons. I mean, how could he have only two, two sons? How would you replenish the earth? And how would the sons get wives? Adam had to give birth to daughters who had to marry their brothers. I think I'm, I'm, I'm in the wrong place again. When you are told to replenish the earth, do you, one man, do you think it would be to give birth to two children? Do you think Adam was doing family planning? Adam had... Many sons, I, I, if I get a chance, I'll, I'll tell you the names of all his children and his daughters. Wow. Oh, yes. Wow. I understand more than the ancients <laughs> because I keep thy precepts. Beautiful. Now, this is the part that I'm going to share with you. Then I'm going to show you a message that I just received this, this morning. It says, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Yes. All the evil ways in the world, you are refrained from keeping them because you keep thy word. I can't imagine, you know, one day I, saw a test that people were doing, medical test, and then there were five bad things in the test, and they wanted to check, and there were five things. Do you see? Which make it bad. Whatever the test, whatever the test they were doing. Out of the five, do you see? One of them was, do you smoke? It was like one of the major factors. Do you smoke? Whether you are going to get certain diseases or not, the one was, do you smoke? And some of you would have written one, only once a week. <laughs> only this. I don't smoke weed. I smoke only this. And another one was, do you drink alcohol? How much? Before they even came to your weight. And then your blood pressure and something. Five of them. But two of them had to do with even just your Christian, this thing alone will help you. You're already out of the factors. Yes. So many things. So I, I don't think you realize what God has done for you by just having his word. Yes. So I pray that from today you will love his word. Amen. God has done a lot for you. And by keeping it, you're becoming wiser than your teachers in school. 
and your teachers even in the church. And you're becoming, you have more understanding than the ancients. Beautiful. Now, when I was coming to church, I got a message from a brother, and I want to read it. Do you want me to read it? Good morning, Daddy. I trust you are well. I just want to say thank you once again for allowing me to partake in this wonderful grace on your life because he's a pastor in one of our churches. The conference went well, etc., and so on. He said, I have been listening to the monsters. Oh, no. Am I, I'm reading the wrong message. Yeah. Now, he said, I've been listening to a Moses man, I've been really blessed. But this is another one. He says, this is a message from a church member to the pastor. I loved and enjoyed the topic that you preach today. Even though a sister's name is mentioned and I came late to church today. I enjoyed the message, even though I came late. Due to an unfortunate incident. I wanted to talk to you personally about it. The unfortunate incident. When we were coming to church. But to no avail. Because I had to catch my last train. On our way to church in the train, someone ended their life when we reached Lenzburg. I think it's a town in Switzerland. A person came and stood in front of the train, a young person. The train to burst over. The whole action and incident is ingrained in my memory. Yeah. Due to seeing, I saw it in the aftermath. Good morning. It is just an amazing at the rate of suicides. We keep praying the Lord to save as many. Suicide among young people. To save as many as possible. So on the way to church, you see a young person. Huh? Like, that's why they were late. You see, and when you see the young people, many killing themselves, destroying themselves in every country in different ways. You understand when he says, I have restrained, refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Those two were on their way to church and one was on his way or her way to kill himself at the same train. And I don't know if you've seen a train. I mean, it's one of the heaviest things to stand in front of it. It's one of the horrible, but it's a common thing they do. So I, I don't think you know what God has done for you because you are used to church. You are used to church all the time. It's like it's as if you were born to be in the church and you feel that everybody is in church. But I'll tell you, you are very few. That you love the law. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation every day. Many people don't love. 
the law. They don't even know it. They've not even heard it. And if they hear, they even doubt it. And there are so few of us who really know the law and even love the Lord. And it is a blessing that you are one of those people who knows God. Yes, you are not perfect. Huh? But it's been worth having the Lord in our lives, living in this world. It's been worth knowing him even though, I mean, we are also struggling. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you know what is an albatross? An albatross is a clumsy bed, but it's only clumsy on the ground when it's trying to take. When it's flying, it can fly for almost one year without coming to the ground. Yes. It's a superb flyer. But when it's taking off or landing, <laughs> you will laugh at it. Some of us, our lives, we are carrying our flesh around. It's like an albatross, something clumsy, odd. It's like, ah, a person who claims to be holy. Huh? Fairy some way. But we are still moving. We are serving the Lord. So my friends, I want us to thank God for his beautiful word. That you are sitting there watching on Sunday morning in the Flow Church. Huh? What a blessing. I've refrained my feet from every evil way, including suicide. Because there is hope in Christ. And I tell you, even if you are even suicidal and depressed and you come to church for a service, I'm telling you, that feeling will go away and that you they need because there's nothing like church to lift up your spirit church makes people happy well I, I don't know the church you're going to but most people are happy yeah there's some at least you know you almost feel like everything is going to be okay yeah one of the things for a shepherd is to is a shepherd is to tell people that it's going to be okay yeah, that's one of our main jobs is to tell people that it is well it will be okay it's going to be okay in there. I mean, you may even think it's going to be okay, but to, to be told that it's going to be okay Hallelujah. is one of the great works of a shepherd. Everything's going to be all right. Yes, everything's going to be all right. Don't worry. God is, God is on his throne. Amen. That's why God wants more shepherds. More shepherds to love the people. Because I was talking to this, my pastor, and he was telling me about how people have been killing themselves. So as it happened this morning, he just sent me that we were late. And this is what happened. Because when somebody does that, the train has to stop. God is looking for shepherds. No matter who you are, how young you are, I'm telling you, God is looking for workers and people who love the word and have, have nothing else to say but the word. One of my young pastors, not only is he young, but he looks young. He's a little shortish and he looks like a, young, a little young boy. Somebody was, was going to kill himself or herself. And when the person was taken to the hospital, the person said, I don't want my mother. I don't want my father. I don't want to see anybody. They didn't know what to do. He said, I only want my pastor. I only want my pastor. And after midnight, they called the, the, the young the pastor. <laughs> when he arrived, they saw a young boy who he looks like one of the new ashes. <laughs> I said, who are you? Said, I'm the pastor. I said, you are the only person who can help in this situation. The doctors, everybody. Oh, what it is a blessing it is to be a shepherd. The word of God that made you to have more understanding than the ancients. And wiser than the teachers. Oh. Dear people, I tell you, 
receive the word of God with gladness. Be soak in the same messages, the same one. When you like it, it's a sign that it's a honey. It's a sign that it's a honey for it's honey for you. I say it's a honey. It's a honey. It is a honey for you. <laughs> it is a honey for you. <laughs> That's the one. Keep on soaking it in. Soak it in. Soak it in. Jump in your car. Shout in your car. Shout on the waves. Beautiful. Fall in love. Oh, how I love thy law. How I love thy law. It is my meditation. All the day. I know God is going to bless you with his word. Yes. But I think we don't know how great it is for us to have the word. That, I don't have anything for anybody except the word. I don't have anything except the word. Yes. You know, I went somewhere to preach one day, and I didn't know what to, to preach. And the Lord said to me, read verses to the people. Just read verses. Read verses. That's the word. And that's the revelation that Billy Graham had. He said, if the word is the word of God, then if you read it to the people, it should have a powerful effect. And that's what he did. And it had that effect. God has really blessed us with the word. I've seen an end to perfection. But how broad the word of God is very broad. There's no area of your life that it will not affect. May you be a servant and a minister of this great word all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. I want you to take out an offering to, to thank God that he has saved you from every evil. Like any evil in any country. Any type of evil. I want you to worship him this morning with thanksgiving, with your special thank you. Lord, you have been good to me. And I think it's a good time for everyone to worship the Lord, to thank him with this amazing word. And a blessing, a blessing of a special gift and a special offering. This morning, you, it could have been you saying, I don't know why I'm alive. I don't know what is the reason for existing. I, I have no idea why I should be living Huh? When you watch a show on TV, you don't know what it, you are looking for some idea. But I love thy law. Thy law is beautiful. Thy law is beautiful. And it is wonderful in its power to save you and to help all of us. What a blessing. Honey, honey, I need you. I love you. I love you. Your word. Let us welcome. Oh, how 
I love thy law, O oh Lord. It is my meditation all the day long through thy commandments. Thou hast made me wise, wiser than my enemies. Oh, my enemies, how sweet are thy words, sweeter than honey. We are so blessed today to I just I just interrupted the when I saw that verse I've refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Then it says, I have not departed from thy judgments. I've not departed from thy judgments. Because we can depart. But thank God, if you depart, you can come back. 
Amen. Amen. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. That's what I'm saying to you, those of you who love chocolate and sweets. You must love the, the Lord and the word more than or more than, than more than, than you know how to spell more than m o r d a r more than, than. it's a word more than <laughs> more than, than oh how sweet are thy words i've loved the word you know since i was a teenager and I, I, I had friends who loved the word. Yes. We, we enjoyed the word. Yes. You know, when you're a leader and you don't have many people to advise you on the spot, the word of God is the big advisor. So I've gotten used to getting advice from the word. That says, thou hast made me wiser than my enemies. Like the word of God tells you something to do every day. Wow. Yes. Beautiful. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Notice when the Lord said, I hate lies. I hate false, false things. Things that are false don't ever, you see, when false things are flourishing, you may think that God even is ambivalent or doesn't mind. But he actually has hatred for false things. Because it reminds him of the devil. That's why he says that when the spirit of truth is come, he will lead you into truth. Truth will lead you to truth. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. One day I came out of the office and somebody told me that a snake had been seen on the path that I, I walk on. Or that I've been working on. So from that day, I was not comfortable to walk on that same path in the dark. I needed a light for my path. And without that light coming on, I wasn't interested in taking any step on a on a path that some it wasn't grass or like a cement, but they saw a snake there. Why should I be stepping? You see, you have been stepping on snakes in your life because you don't have the light for your path to guide you. So you keep on stepping on false snakes and things that are not good for you. Yes. Beginning from today, you are not going to step on any. But, but you don't need a bad experience. We have a brother on campus, anytime we have a snake, we call him. He has a special hatred for snakes because he was bitten, he stepped on one. He stepped on a snake before. So he hates them and he's able to kill them with a passion, with a passion. <laughs> Do you want to step on something before you know that the light for your path is necessary? No way. The Lord is going to bless you. Father, thank you for this amazing revelation of your word in Jesus' name. Let's welcome our worship team. We're going to give us one or two. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to subscribe, share. Our service is ending in about 20 minutes, but we are going to have worship and then... I'm going to share something small with you.
Let's welcome our new worship team. It's working already. We just want to stand on to our feet. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. Come, let us worship. the people of this 
steadfast love. You may be seated for a moment. I want to share with you very briefly, because we just have a few minutes to go, on the five tests of the righteous. Amen. And um, the reality is that righteous people have tests. Psalm 26, verse 2. Examine me in the American Bible, Lord, and put me to the test. Refine my mind and my heart. Amen. Amen. So whether you like it or not, your mind needs refining. And your heart needs refining. And the only way to refine is to be tested. And that's why we are tested with fire. All right? Now, Deuteronomy. Today, I want us to talk about the test of the wilderness. That is test number two. The last time was about Mara. 
Today is a test of the wilderness. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 1. All the commandments that I am commanding you today, you shall be careful to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Verse 2. You shall remember all the way, all the way, which the Lord led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. Amen. Amen. Now, the test of the wilderness, number one, is a test that lasts for a long time. I once asked someone, his exam he was doing was eight hours. The test, the exam was eight hours. It lasted eight hours. Yeah. And it was three days of eight hours. A medical exam. So there are exams that take a long time. And I'm sure some of you are used to doing one hour tests. Two hours. Three hours when it's very, very long. But eight hours. And it's every day. Hmm. Now, this wilderness test is 40 years. <laughs> 40 years. Look at it. Now, give me the Americano Bible, please, because that is where it uses the word test. New American Bible. All right, testing you. Look at that. You see that? Testing you. Yes. Testing you. Now, I wonder how many people can. I mean, I wish I, wish I wasn't reading what I was reading. Uh-huh. I wish I would say this test was for four years. Yes. Four months. Yeah. But I feel that there are tests that just last your whole life. I'm also reading it. And I don't want to use the word that I hate it. That is true. But it's 40 years. 40 years in the wilderness. I mean, that's serious. Not four years. Not four months. Living 40 years from the time that you got saved at the age of maybe 20 plus 40 is equal to 60. (laughs) By which time you are on retirement. You are a pensioner. Your desires are low. Your interests are in life. You don't even want to get out of bed. So number one is a test that lasts a long time. And I won't say your whole life, but really long. Really long. One brother said to me that if I can stay with my wife till I die, I've won more souls than you have won at Healing Jesus Campaign. He said, if, if I can stay, I've won more souls than you. <laughs> That's serious. People have different experiences. So, may the Lord help you in your wilderness test. 
Then the next, number two, about this test of the wilderness. And I just, I just have four minutes to go, so I'm, I'm going through the points quickly. It's a test of humility. It's a test to see how you handle humble things. Notice the scripture. He said that he might humble you. That he might humble you. There are too many of us that are not compatible with humble things. Especially people who think they've been brought up in an elitist super place or a super country or a super society. 90% of the people in this world are living in difficulty and poverty. And 100% are living in difficulty of one sort or another. But one of the things that cuts out people, that differentiates the men from the boys, is humble things. A demotion, a humble circumstance. Now, a wilderness life is physically a humbling life. You live in the desert. There's no running water. There's no toilet. There's humble circumstances. You bath outside. Where do you think you bath? You bath outside. Toilet is outside. Everybody walks there and comes back. Anybody you see walking this way is going to the toilet. Then they all walk back. A lot of people go in the morning, they stand in a queue. Hmm? Or they just do it everywhere in the wilderness and the sun will dry it out. Yes. So you find even sometimes people come to the Bible school and they say the BMCDI rotation because in our Bible school you have to do normal menial jobs. Ah, people don't like menial jobs, especially sometimes even people from you don't even know why they have that um, attitude. And they all say, ah, when I did BMCDI, it was the most, whatever. I learned humility. And you ask yourself, where you came from? What, are you, what do you have there? What do you have? Where are you from? But in your mind, it's ingrained, ingrained that you are from a superior place. Meanwhile, you were living in squalor. You have nothing. And see, that those people, they fail Many people fail the humility test. Because you see, ministry, you start in a humble way. And ministry involves humility and humble things. So that's why I said, I, 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 to humble you. Some of you have never had parents who tell you anything. Because some of our parents, they are not around. They've gone to work. They, there's no one to tell you. You don't know anything. You don't know how to cook, how to dress, how to live, how to behave. I mean, it really takes a lot to parent a child. That's why somebody said it takes a village to bring up a child. Never been corrected before. Never been told anything that's not pleasant. Never been told you are wrong. Never been told you don't look nice. Never been told that your hair is ugly. Never been told anything real. You just come out and people say, oh, I like your dress. Oh, I like your hair. Where do you buy this hair? Because we know it's all bought. Look at it. It says that he might humble you. So when you get to the test of the wilderness, it is a test of humbling realities. When the Lord called me to the ministry, I knew I would never prosper. I would never travel again anywhere. I would never travel anywhere again. And I accepted it. And I'll never have a house. And I accepted it. I'll never have a, I don't know. I didn't think of a car. I, I thought I would have a car. But it didn't, it didn't matter which car. I've never thought of a particular, any car. 
If you don't accept to be humble or to have a humble second, you're most likely you'll be out. The people that need the Lord and that want the Lord, they are mostly in humble circumstances. <laughs> Sorry for left. The difference between full-time ministry and secular employment may be the same salary. Is the humbling reality. Yes. Even the humbling thought that you are, you, you are paid by a church or that you live through church work, it disturbs people. <laughs> Sorry for left and right. Number three, the test of the wilderness comes soon after great promises of glory. You see, when you are called and there's promise of glory, a great promise of beauty, something great from the word, the next thing is the wilderness. Rejoiner says, he says, after the call, comes a wilderness. This is what he says all the time. He says, you can't even believe after God calls you, said, this is what I'm going to use you for to do. I'm going to uh, call you to be a prophet, a great pastor, whatever. The next moment you see that you are in a wilderness, ask yourself, is this the call? Is this what I've been called to? Because but God told me that I was sending you to the world to do this. What, what is the wilderness about? I'm taking you to a land of milk and honey. The next experience is a wilderness. Where is the milk and honey? So, Regina keeps on saying it. After the call, is the next thing is the wilderness. And is the exact opposite of what you have imagined the call is about. If you fail it, you failed. You will never see the milk and honey. And most of them failed. There's only the young people who are allowed to go through. Only the young Less than 20. That's why those of you who take great pleasure in dressing as an older person, having the hairstyle of the somebody who was born in the 70s, some of those who were born in the 80s, looking like your mothers and your grandmothers, eh, having an attitude of an old person, very grown up in your posture, slow moving with some attitude about things and laughter. When you see laughter, joy, happiness, and you are just sort of cool and diplomatic sort of amen. Oh. It doesn't help. Before you see the milk, and the honey, you see the exact opposite. Yes. I've called you to the world. Thank you. You shall go as my servant. It's nice. Before that, going as whatever servant is the wilderness. Yes. Is the test of the wilderness. Yes. A lot of people drop out. It is the young who survive. Anyone who wants to make himself old, and excuse me to use the word, mature, you, you are making a mistake in the realm of the spirit. Yeah. Most of the things that God has for you, you can't do them if you are old in a certain way. Yeah. Look at churches that are filled with old so-called mature. They are gradually shrinking. The pastor cannot even preach what he really wants to preach. Everybody has been around for years. They won't even really be interested in most of the things. Most of the things in the Bible are go ye into all the world, do this, I will be with you, my power shall this, my this, the spirit, the anointing, the power of God, all that. I mean, when you are just retiring, wait, relaxing, and waiting to just be a diplomat, a very I mean, dignified, whatever. It doesn't go with all the greater works than this shall you do. I go to my father, you shall do this. Take up your cross and follow me. Anyone who comes after me, look. It's not for the dignified, though. It's not for those who have postured themselves as Madam Whatevers and Lady Whatevers. You are left out. You may not know. You may say whatever, but you are out. You are out. You are left out. 
Yes. So, Charlie, only those under 20. Huh? <laughs> Survive the wilderness. All the old people couldn't make it. When that, this, so we are tired of all this. We are tired of all these things. We said we were coming to church. Why are we being given all these experiences? One time I was sending people out to be said, ah, one church we've come to look at what they are doing. What I said, there's an outreach. We should go here. We should do this. Sorry for left. Don't come to this church if you don't want to be young, youngish, and flexible. Don't come here. Go to another church. Don't give your money here. Don't come here. Don't be part. Yeah, I'm in it. Wherever you are. And the 20s are the only ones who crossed the wilderness. It eliminates the old, especially the old in their mind. Only Joshua and Caleb. They are the only old people who went to. And the Bible says because they were of another spirit. I think it's 1424. Yeah. Numbers. Because they had another spirit. Yes. They had another spirit. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit. And has followed me fully. Yeah. He was the only old man who could enter. So, those of you who have made yourselves what we call premature aging, you don't know what you've done to yourself. I read a book, it said men used to live for 19 jubilees. 19 jubilees. That's 950 years. But even from Abraham could not live even for four jubilees. And today, he said, and he prophesied. That was in the beginning, in the book of Genesis. Genesis means in the beginning. The book of Genesis is a very important book because Jesus referred to it. He said, in the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, he kept referring to it. That is in Genesis, in Genesis. And in the beginning, you see, he said that a time will come when a man is 75, it shall be said that he is an old man. And that all men shall grow old quickly. Yes. He said, they shall grow old quickly. Look at my face. I have not even lived for two jubilees. A jubilee is 50 years. That's why our, our, our... White House in Ghana is called Jubilee House. 50 years we were. I've not even lived for two Jubilees. I'm feeling pains. <laughs> hey. So growing old quickly rather is a punishment. So those of you, you are 20 something years so you behave like a 49 year old woman you are 32 you behave like 79 I don't want to talk about you but I'm saying it your mind elegance and stately behavior is all that is nice to you it's not nice to God yes and finally the test what, how many have I given you? Three. Three. Number one is a test of one. It's a long test. It's 40 years. Number two? It's a test of humility and humble things. Number three? 
It's a test that comes after great promises or a great call. Yes. That's all you're going to get. And number four is a test of obedience. Yeah. As a test of obedience. Wow. God is going to test you whether you are obedient to him. To see whether thou wouldest obey him. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. Deuteronomy 8.2. Or no, the Bible says. <laughs> American says or not. But King James says or no. You keep his commandment or no. I will not. Mercy. Mercy. Father, thank you for all these amazing revelations of the test of the wilderness that you are taking us through. A long test, a humble test, a test that eliminates most of the grown ups, and a test of obedience. May we pass the test of the wilderness that's between the call and the moment of milk and honey there is a wilderness may we do well to go through excellently we give you thanks in Jesus name now says the Lord there are some watching you have experienced the exact opposite of what God promised you it's because you are in the wilderness and you are experiencing a wilderness test. It's the opposite of what he said or what you believe he said to you. Take heart. But after the wilderness is the great promise of great glory for your life and ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want hope, Pray with me this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus please, forgive please forgive me for my sin. Have mercy on me. Mercy on me. I give my heart to you. I, I want to serve you. Help me to serve you, Help me to serve you for the rest of my life. Of my life. In, Jesus name, In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you pray this prayer, I want you to uh, send a message. I have a whole team of pastors like who can talk to you personally. Now listen, let me, let me tell you something. The, uh, the reason I'm showing you this number, one time I was watching a, a documentary and they were talking about people who do sex videos for like commercially. And the person who was giving the interview said that some of the men who call they don't want sex. They just want somebody to talk to. So sometimes they call, they pay. But they don't have to do anything sexual. Just talking. So what I'm saying is that many people need somebody to talk to. And that is why this number is here. Because all the flow pastors are ready to spend hours talking with you about whatever. And praying with you. And that is a great blessing. So please make use of this amazing number we have there. You can text WhatsApp to any, from anywhere. And it will be a blessing. Take out your special Thanksgiving offering. You are coming to the wilderness. Amen. Offering. Amen. Don't be worried about too many offerings. There's nothing like too many offerings. Like shoes. There's nothing like too many 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 offerings. Take out this time. I want you to thank God that, Lord, I'm coming through the wilderness. Coming out of the wilderness. Hallelujah. How many believe that you will soon be drinking Coke with ice and lemon? Oh, yeah. There's nothing like that in the wilderness. But soon you'll be coming to a place where say, oh, wow. I never knew there was Coca-Cola here. Oh, yes. God, there's no electricity in the wilderness. 
There are some countries that don't have good electricity. All cooks are hot. It's hot cook nice. It's not nice at all. <laughs> Bless your heart as you give. Take your offering out and sow a seed again. It's a great blessing. Father, thank you for everyone who is giving an amazing offering today. What a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Don't forget we'll be live. Flow Church is, is your church. You can have Flow Church with me at least three times. It's going to increase to four. Soon, five, and then we are on. That's a church. Now we are, home is church. If we are going back to Bible days, the church in the house. Yes, the next big is small. Take out your offering, your uh, Holy Communion. And Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the Holy Communion. Let there be healing today for all that are not well. We pray for healing. And we receive the body of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus. Let him say amen. If you believe the word, let the whole church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Now, God the blood has spoken. for your mistake. So let the church. Now, in the realm of the spirit, I see a mistake that has opened a door for the enemy. But through this communion today, may every door that has been opened in your life be closed. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Lift your hands for your blessing. Today receive the blessing of the anointing. The anointing that makes the difference. Yes, Jesus. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Yes, anointed. Be anointed. Yes, Lord. Be filled with the spirit. Oh, Jesus. Be filled with power. Yes, Be filled with the glory. The anointing. May the Spirit be with you in a real way. Everybody, receive the Spirit in your heart. The Holy Spirit. May He minister to you. May He speak to you. May he guide you. Your days of walking separate from the Holy Spirit, from the anointing, are over. Yes. Walk in the glory. Walk in the anointing. Survive every 40 year test. Every wilderness test. Every humbling test. Come out with shining colors. The Lord heal you. And the Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine. The Lord hack into your prayer. That you've prayed for years. May he answer. May he remember. May he see the words that come from your lips. And may he hearken to your cry, the cry of your heart. And bless you. Lord, I bless all the children. I bless all those that are part of this family. Let your grace multiply on all the churches and all the pastors. Those watching on Flow Pacific and Flow Asia, Flow America, every other flow. Let your blessing rest. Now I see a blessing on your head. Lift your hands. Ola haspahara mashandari mekeba. Be blessed of Jesus. Be healed of the Lord. Be blessed at home. May you be remembered by the Lord and never forsaken, never forgotten. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 
be remembered. Anyone that is forgotten, neglected, set aside, not noticed by the Holy Spirit upon your life, you'll be noticed. You'll be remembered. Amen. Will never be forsaken. Amen. In the name of He who died on the cross for us all, He rose up triumphantly on the third day. Be blessed in Jesus. When your dreams about to die, Amen. Knowing that God is not a man, He just can't lie. In spite of what, what the devil does.
Blessing to be part of the Flow Church, right? Oh, I didn't hear you. It's a blessing to be part of the Flow Church. That's that's a bit better. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Prophet, for such a powerful, powerful message today on the test of the wilderness. Oh, I hope you are blessed at home. I can see you in the comment section. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us on Zoom. Matilda, I see you. Those that were on Zoom, God bless you for being with us. It's an absolute blessing. An absolute blessing. Before you go, make sure to like and subscribe to The Flow Church. There's no point being here, but not fully connecting. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you're fully connected on The Flow Church, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, so you don't miss out on anything Flow. We have a number of services coming forward in the coming weeks. We don't want you to miss out on anything Flow. So make sure you're subscribed, you're following, you're signed up, and not going to miss anything that comes your way. If you gave your life to Christ, if you gave your life to Christ... We want to get the number on the screen. Maybe you missed it earlier. Let us know. Let us know. The number is on the screen for you. Plus 233-550669603. We have, we'll have a, a, a thing on the screen that will continue to rotate. So if you want to serve in the Flow Church, if you have a testimony, if you want to be involved, if you want to let us know about anything, if you want to follow us, we've got all the details on the screen. It will continue to go around so you don't miss anything. If you need counseling, we have flow pastors all over here ready to, to help you, ready to support you. So you can just reach out. If you want to be a member, if you want to register with the Flow Church, you, you, you tune in but you're not registered. You don't have a, a physical church. You don't have a church that you go to. You can register with us and the number will be on the screen. Keep watching. You'll see it as it goes around. It's been an absolute blessing. The time has finished all too soon we have come to an end, but we will be back very, very soon for the Flow Prayer Meeting this Tuesday at 4 a.m. GMT. I hope to see you there. It's been an absolute blessing. I'm Seamus, your Flow Pastor, and I'll see you next time. For the testimony, 
and my meditation I understand more than the ancient Because I keep the precepts How sweet are thy words Sweeter than honey to my mouth oh, oh. Oh, ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Honey, honey, I love you Honey, honey, I need you Honey, honey, I love you Honey, honey, I need you Testimony, I love you Testimony, I need you Testimony, I love you. Testimony, I need you. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word, O oh Lord. I've not departed from thy judgment, for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words, sweeter than honey to my Thy word, O oh Lord, is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word, O oh Lord, is a light unto my path. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Oh, 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 therefore, I hate every false way. How sweet are thy words, sweeter than honey. 